Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, how should the Steelers feel about their narrow win against the Ravens? Plus, Michael Vick explains how Nick Foles can step up for the Eagles with Carson Wentz out. And what should we take away from the Cowboys blowing out the Giants? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The Steelers clinched the division title with a big 39-38 win against the Ravens. Ben Roethlisberger became the first quarterback in NFL history to throw for over 500 yards three times in his career. Le'Veon Bell added three touchdowns, and Antonio Brown had over 200 receiving yards, including a huge catch with just over a minute left to set up the game-winning field goal. But on the defensive side, the 38 points was the most the Steelers have allowed in a game this season. So, Shannon, yes. should the Steelers be encouraged or discouraged by their performance last night? I would be discouraged. The Steelers showed me what I already knew. Offensively, they're second to none. They're explosive. Le'Veon Bell showed again last night why he's the best running back in the game. Not only can he run it, he can catch the football. They line him up out wide. They put him in the slot. He ran a slant route on a, on a, deep, on a safety for a 20-yard touchdown. There are very few running backs that can do that. They ask him to run out routes. They ask him to run in cuts. And he can run the route tree. Antonio Brown is spectacular. I mean, what do you say about a guy? What I don't understand, especially uh, the, uh, the Steelers need a t- uh, field goal to get in field goal range to beat you, and you go man-to-man coverage on Antonio Brown. Here's a guy that's... Who was that guy who was on him? That guy, remember used, used car, car? Used car. Yeah, we don't need him anymore. We're good now. They better be glad mm-hmm. my phone mm-hmm. wasn't working yesterday. Uh-huh. I was getting my phone. My phone was down a little bit, Joy. Mm. Skip. You should buy a computer so you could actually, <laughs> you know... They're, they have them now, you know. The Steelers targeted Antonio Brown 18 times, 11 catches, 213 yards. The thing that you, that's so frustrating for, the, for me watching the Ravens is you know Ben is going to go to him. And if you get beat, you make Martavis Bryant beat you, you make Jesse James beat you, you make someone else other than 84 beat you. And for some reason, unbeknownst to me, Dean Pease refused to double the guy. I get it. And this is the problem they're going to have when they play New England because we're going to talk about them later, Skip. You know Coach Belichick is not going to let you beat him with your best. You beat him with auxiliary pieces, he's going to walk to the middle of the field and say, congratulations, and keep it moving. Mm. The Steelers had 550 yards with no turnovers, and they won by one point. Mm-hmm. The Baltimore Ravens come in to, to that game playing outstanding defense. Mm-hmm. Lead the league in, uh, in, in, in INTs. Was very, very high up in the plus turnover ratio. Yeah, they gave up almost 550 yards and didn't take the ball away. The mere fact that they were even in the ball game should let you know how just how well offensively the Ravens offense play. Because normally when you give up those kind of numbers, Skip, yep. you get blown out. You do. If I'm the Steelers, I'm very discouraged. Because guess what? (laughs) The Ravens was 31st in passing offense. They're 30th in total offense. Now you get a team coming in their next Sunday at about 425. They're in the top two or three in offense. Tom Brady's probably number one in passing. And this is what you're going up against. That's not Joe Flacco. Now, I know Joe Flacco is unbelievable. He threw the ball well, except for that uh, costly Mm -hmm. turnover on the opening drive. Yep. But, Skip, if I'm the Steelers, I don't know how I'm uh, encouraged about this. You gave up almost six yards of carry. Joe Flacco was dealing with the football, and now you get a team that's way better than, I think, the Baltimore Ravens coming into your building. Mm. Maybe it was a situation, Skip, because we've heard this all offseason. Everything they were doing was about this matchup because it was going to decide who comes to the other building for the AFC Championship game. Mm. And so maybe they were looking past some of these teams. But it's hard for me to believe that they can play any better than they did offensively and only win by one. And when this team is coming in, and you know what they represent offensively. Mm-hmm. And knowing Coach Belichick will refuse to allow Antonio Brown and uh, Le'Veon Bell mm. to beat them. So if Joe Fluco, as I call him, put up 38 points at Pittsburgh, Tom Brady will put up. He's going to be somewhere. For, he, he'll be, I believe he'll be more than 38. Mm. And yet, after all you said, and I hear your point after point after point, I got to tell you, from my heart, I've said the same things about Pittsburgh all year. I told you I'm not buying Pittsburgh. But last night, late in that game, I was impressed. I got to tell you, that was not easy what Ben and Antonio pulled off last night. And remember, the Ravens came in third in scoring defense. The Ravens came in third in pass defense. And 
I, I sat back last night, and you know how much I love me some Tom Brady, and I thought at the end of the game, Tom Brady's going to have a hard time winning that game next week, next Sunday at Pittsburgh. I just think it's set up. Now, remember, Brady has to play tonight against a, a division rival. It used to be an arch rival. It's a hard game for them at Miami. Monday night, travel back to Foxborough and then have to travel on a short week to Pittsburgh. It should be big advantage Pittsburgh. I hear all the, the negatives, but I'm looking at their glasses half full because as perplexing as they've been all year, I don't think since Montana to Rice, I've seen a more lethal deep threat combination than Ben Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. I got to, I, I was just spellbound by it. I just sat back last night and said, you're kidding. They just did it again to a team that knows them as well as that team knows anybody. And Dean Pease, is he not really good at what he does? He, he's very good. Yeah. He's, very, so, he's a very so good DC. I, I, I'm with you. I sat back. Remember, they get it with 225 left. It's first and 10 at their 27. And I'm thinking, no way are the Ravens going to let them do to the Ravens what they've been doing to everybody. Isn't this their MO? Yeah. Don't they just sort of stumble through the game, and then all of a sudden, two minutes ago, you say, okay, that's enough of this. Ho-hum. Let's, let's, let's get rid of these guys, mm-hmm. right? And he did to the Ravens, their arch rival, on Sunday night football, what they've been doing to everybody. They look bad doing it, and then when it's time, they pull it off. So it's first and 10 at the 27. On the first play, Roethlisberger gets sacked by Sapp, and it was a host of others. But, but I mean, not Sapp, by uh, Suggs. Suggs. Suggs got to him. My man, T-Sizzle. He got to him. And now, all of a sudden, it's second and 19 at the eight. What do you think is going to happen against Baltimore? When, when you think you're done, mm-hmm. like you're, you're in trouble. They're, they're going to play some, you know, almost some sort of prevent where you, you're, you're just not going to go the length and get a field goal. Right. And he dumps one off to Jesse James for six yards. And all of a sudden, it's third and 13 at your 14-yard line. And I thought, that's it. Pittsburgh's done. I, I picked Baltimore because I just thought Flacco would have a good night against them. And he did. He did. I mean, I don't know how he could play a whole lot better. No. And, and I, that He made one mistake on the opening drive, Skip. They were going down yeah, the field. He so did. I don't know what that was. I don't I, know what he saw. I, I don't know. He just threw it right <laughs> to the safety. But So now it's third and 13 at the 14. And Ben just nonchalantly drops back, and he just kind of hangs around in the pocket, and he looks, and he says, oh, you know what? I'm going to throw it to Jesse again. He's open in the middle. I'll throw it to him. And he throws it to him for 16 yards, and all of a sudden it's first and 10 at the 30. And then it's incomplete, and it winds up third and four at the 36, and I still think they're cooked. And the one thing happens that I, I would never have imagined. He throws it right up the boundary, to Antonio, who runs right by Brandon Carr, and I don't know what Weddle's doing. I mean, how can you not? How, how do you get beaten by that in that, that moment? And that's the thing that's so so strange to me, Skip. In that situation, if he throws it to Bryant, he throws it to Jesse James again, you live with it. You don't get beat w- by someone using their best. We know what Antonio Brown represents. And still, on that drive, you allow him to catch three passes that ba- basically beat you. Why? You know, one reason is he's really, really good. I know you love Julio. Yeah. This guy is the best receiver in football, and I don't think it's even close. And this guy is five, maybe I give him 5'10", 180. (laughs) I'm not sure he's 5'10", because we've had him on the show. I've stood next to him. He's more like 5'9", 175 maybe. And nobody can cover him. And Ben has the utmost trust in him. He'll throw it into double coverage because this guy will just go get right. it. And that's the thing, though, Skip. You have to understand also what makes him is that he knows he's going into the game. He's going to get double-digit targets. It makes your job a lot easier when I know I'm going into the game. And I know, Skip, think about it. He's had targets of 15, 9. He, remember the second game of the – well, I don't know if it's the second game. The Jacksonville game where Antonio complained about not getting the ball. Mm-hmm. He had 19 targets. Ben forced some. He had five INTs. He had another 18 targets. Skip, that's unbelievable to get that many targets. Now, when he gets the ball in his hands because he has punt return, he's a punt returner. So he has tremendous start-stop quickness, change of direction. So if you get him the ball in space and you don't have him, you don't have your arms around him, oh, he's going to make you miss. Mm. And that's what you see. They get him the ball in the middle of the field, he stops, he comes to the right, and now he's up the sideline picking up blocks. 
He's special. You just can't let Very him. Special. You can't let him beat you in the final moment. So let this sink in. Pittsburgh goes up 14 to nothing. It feels like they're going to just run on run them, just, yep. just just wipe them out. And from that moment on, Baltimore outscores Pittsburgh 31 to six in Pittsburgh. That is mind blowing to me. 31 to six. Mm -hmm. It's Joe Fluco outscores Big Ben 31 to six over that stretch. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, they look like they're done because they're so far behind at home in the fourth quarter. And I was impressed because these guys just have a nonchalant knack for saying, okay, that's enough. And if it were against somebody, if it's against Cincinnati, I wouldn't read a lot into it. The Ravens' defense is legit. Yeah. And it knows how to play these guys. So I'm just saying that whatever Ben and Antonio have going right now is virtually unstoppable. And I look back at the AFC Championship game last year, obviously in Foxborough, and the final score was New England 36-17. to 17, and It really wasn't that close, didn't feel that close. Mm -hmm. And Antonio caught seven balls for 77 yards, and I can't remember a one of them. They were meaningless. Yeah, they were meaningless. So, would re remember, you, you've lost Dante Hightower on defense. You've mixed and matched all sorts of corners and cast-offs, and you brought this guy in and cut that guy. Are you sure there's enough talent on the New England defense to go to Pittsburgh next Sunday? Because I don't. I think Ben will throw another big party on New England's defense. But here's the thing, though, Skip, is that do you believe the Steelers' defense, with the pinpoint accuracy of Tom Brady throwing the football, he will have Gronk back. We know what Amendola, he finds ways. It doesn't matter who's in the lineup. As long as 12 is in the lineup, the Patriots feel very good that they can get things done. But look at this, Skip. The Steelers had 18 third down attempts. Mm -hmm. They were 12 of 18. 12 67. of 18 against that I've never heard things? of that many. I've never heard of that many. I can honestly say I don't think in my 14 years of playing I, ever, I was ever in a situation we had thir 18 third down attempts. He, they were 12 of 18 for 67%. And the Ravens, Skip, they were four for four on field goals. They were three for three on goal-to-go -go efficiency. So you basically are 100%. Mm -hmm. You got close enough with, in field goal. Now, mind you, Tucker's range is about 60 and in. Mm -hmm. But if you get within that distance, you go 100%. Steelers, Ryan Shazier is not coming back next week. I don't believe Joe Hayden plays next week. Tom Brady, ask yourself this. Tom Brady or Joe Flacco? Joe Flacco just carved him up. Thanksgiving was two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and he carved him up like the Thanksgiving bird. If you don't think Tom Brady is licking his chops, he's like, please don't let me get injured this game because I'm about to get me 600. Okay, I got you. But you don't think Ben is licking his chops against that New England defense that for the first four weeks was historically bad? Yeah. So he throws for, what was it, 506 or whatever yeah. it was, 500-plus, against the Ravens' third-ranked pass defense? I, I think he is going to... He'll throw for 400 against New England. Now, it might be Ben, but don't break. That's, that's the thing. If you look at his numbers in the championship game, he had some decent numbers. Didn't get the ball in the end zone until it was meaningless. And that's the thing. Ben Roethlisberger, his third 500-yard. Skip, I look at 500-yard passing days like four home run games in baseball. There are a lot of them. There are very few people that have multiple four home run games. Mm -hmm. This young man has three. Three. 500, that's, that's the magical, if you're a quarterback, if you could ever throw for 500 yards in the game, that's saying something. Mm -hmm. But to do it three times, we know Ben is special. We know the connection that he has with Antonio Brown. But you cannot let Antonio Brown beat you. If Martavis Bright, now they're going to get Juju back. He had to yep. serve that suspension. Yep. If Juju goes for 200, if Le'Veon rushes for 100 and ha catches for another 125, Skip, I can live with that. I'm not letting Antonio Brown beat me because I already know what he can do. They're going to target him, but I guarantee you, Coach Belichick will give, probably it'll be Malcolm Butler. They'll probably play a lot of two-man. They'll mm -hmm. play a lot of role coverage. They're not letting Antonio Brown go one-on-one -on -one with any of their corners. Well, I used to think that Pittsburgh against New England, they would just try to run the ball and keep it away from Brady. But Le'Veon, my friend Le'Veon, He's now averaging 3.9 yards per carry, but he is leading the league in rushing. And if that stands and he's below four, that'll be the lowest per carry rushing leader yeah. since, like, 1950. <laughs> so it was certainly in the Super Bowl right. era. Right. So it, it's not like they're running the ball because he ran for, what, 46 yards 46 last 46 yards. But, yeah. Skip, here's the thing, though. You, you, you're not mentioning this. 
they ran 82 plays. Eight, no, eight, excuse me, 85 plays mm -hmm. in an NFL game. They ran 85 plays to the other teams. Uh, the Ravens had 62. That's 23 more plays, and they only won by one. That tells you their offense was clicking on all cylinders. One turnover, they lose that game because that's a, that's a possession uh, or that's uh, plays that they don't get. Mm -hmm. One turnover, they lose, and that's the thing. Ben has to play perfect because if he doesn't, I do not believe this defense is good enough to carry the day for them. They can't against mediocre teams. That ben, uh, uh, Tom Brady, that's not Case Keenum. That's not Blake Bortles. Not Joe Flacco. That, that's not Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. That's not Kaiser. That's the real deal. That's as real as it comes. He's the best the NFL has to offer at mm -hmm. the quarterback position currently. So, no, I, I just don't can, – anything can happen. But I, don't, I, I can assure you this, Tom Brady feels very comfortable – going to that stadium, Heinz Field, and playing the Pittsburgh Steelers the way they're currently playing defense Well, he's football. 10 and what, – what is it? 10 and – Two, I believe. Two. two lifetime. Yeah. And he's five and two lifetime at that stadium. And a whole and a whole lot of touchdowns to very little interceptions. That's a combination you doesn't like. Because he's gone there twice and beat him in the AFC Championship game. So, clearly, he doesn't fear them. Yep. I'm here to tell you that after what I witnessed last night, as much bad as there was, it was canceled in the end by greatness. And I think that Ben and Antonio are playing on such a high level right now. I am leaning, I reserve the rest of the week to change, but I am leaning toward picking Pittsburgh to beat New England. I'm still picking New England to win it all because I think New England could still go back there and beat them in an AFC championship yeah. game. Yeah, of course but this is. one shapes up as it's going to belong to the Steelers. And I'm going to say it again. Every time Tom Brady goes to where you used to work, down in South Beach, down in Miami, especially in a big emotional night game. By the way, Jay Cutler, just for the record, he's 11-7 and seven on Monday Night Football, so he hasn't been that bad. He's had some big night games. Well, he has. So, Don't do that, Skip. Well, I'm, I'm going to do it because he has – remember that big Sunday night game he played against San Francisco? Um, this is going back to 2014. Yes. Uh, Colin Kaepernick had gone to Dallas yeah. and just cleaned out the Cowboys, yeah. and it was home on Sunday night yes. and opened Levi yeah. Stadium. Yes. And Jay Cutler just took over in the second half, threw four touchdowns to no interceptions. He is capable of doing that. And the Dolphin defense always beats up Tom Brady. Sue and Cameron Wake are always all over him, and he continues not to be able to practice with some weird Achilles injury. I don't know what it is. He's beat up. And no, he's just sure. old. Huh? He's just old. He's 40. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's hard for you to skip. As you get older, yeah. it gets harder and harder for you to go out there, especially after playing a game, to bounce right back around and be ready to go on, on Wednesday. Well, I think this game will be much closer than most people think because the uh, Dolphins are 11-point underdogs at home. I'd take those points right now. I still think New England will win that game. I'm just not sure they can go to Pittsburgh on a short Vegas week. Vegas been giving up people a lot of money. Vegas been giving people money away, too. You see what they did with the Rams, Philly. You see what they did with Seattle, Jacksonville. They just giving people money away. Y'all keep on listening to Vegas. I know, but you talk about the end of the Rams game. Yeah. You know how that got covered. It was covered by... regardless because the Rams yeah. were favored. Was it? Did yeah. They were favored in the end. Yes. I thought it ended up getting covered by the last play. But... Mm -mm. Okay. The Rams were favored. Mm -hmm. Well. And you were liking that. <laughs> well, I did for a while until and Nick the Cowboys Foles came in. And the Cowboys were up by high, were favored mm -hmm. by what? Five and a half, six points. Mm -hmm. And what did I tell you would happen, Skip? We'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. No? This is a very on-brand win for the Steelers, right? You pan they're panicking just... the whole time, and then somehow they just pull it out at the end. They're a very mentally tough team without Ryan Shazier and Juju out. And but the difference to me between every other team that they've beaten and the Patriots is the Patriots won't let Antonio Brown No! Beat them. They're going to make the other players yeah. beat them. If Juju, the if Juju goes off Juju, or... Juju, Bryant, James, they're going to have at it. Beat him. You know yeah. what? I think this is going to be the one where they won't be able to contain Antonio. We He's just it. playing at a supremely high level. He was playing level. at that level last I've, year. I've never seen anything like this since Montana to Rice. I've never seen anything like this. No mercy. The Eagles reportedly believe Carson Wentz may have torn his ACL during yesterday's win over the Rams. Wentz dove into the end zone for a touchdown, which was then called back because of a penalty. But Wentz stayed in the game for four more plays and threw a touchdown pass to Alshon Jeffrey on fourth down. The Eagles went on to beat the Rams to get to 11-2. and two. Nick Foles finished the game at quarterback and talked about Wentz's injury after the game. Everyone's really excited because we put in a lot of work this season. A um, lot, a lot of work. We've won a lot of games. You know, it's been a great team effort. Carson's been a big piece of that puzzle. 
Um, everyone's really excited about the win, but yeah, I mean, you have you know your your starting quarterback go down. It's uh, it's emotional. It's emotional for me. I work with him every day. We do everything together. Um, I'm excited we won, but at the same time, you know, I'm dealing emotionally with you know seeing him go down. That's, you never want that. We're joined by Fox mm. 7 analyst Michael Vick. Welcome, Michael. Mm, Good morning. Thank you. So you were a teammate of Foles for two years with the Eagles. You know him pretty well. Yeah. How far can he take Philly? I think he can take him far. And I know this might sound, you know, a little far-fetched, but if you look at Nick and, and where he's come from, you know, how hard he's worked over the years, I think he's a confident guy. I think he's different. When he took over for me in 2012 mm -hmm. after the concussion, he was a rookie. You know, he stepped in. He played consistent but it was sort of you know inconsistent if right. that makes sense right. but he was still in the learning process now fast forward to now he's had a ton of experience you know he's been in st louis had some tough times had some good yeah. times it, you know it, it hasn't been clean for him but you know i think he's a guy that he can step in as long as he's confident as long as he step in, steps into the huddle and show the guys that it's not going to be a, a drop off I think Doug Peterson has to take it upon himself to show the team when installing the plays and installing the offense that it's not going to be a drop off. Everybody will feed off of that. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, Nick can go out and erase all the bad memories from 2014, his last year with Chip. Mm -hmm. What the Philadelphia Eagles fan base see, of, see in him and what he can do, it'll be a drop off from Carson Wentz because he covers up a lot of the things that, you know, the problems that they may have or things they may surface. But, at the end of the day, I think he'll give them a chance to go deep into the playoffs. Super Bowl, I don't know. It's one game at a time from here on out. Mm. So how amazed were you, how shocked were you when he took over for you, replaced you because of injury in 2013? Yeah. He goes on this run. He goes 27 wow. to 2. Yeah. 27 touchdowns to two interceptions. Did you keep watching thinking he's going to come back to earth like, how could I forget about the 2013 season? One of the seasons where I, you know, was, I was so tuned in with, with Chip Kelly and what we was doing as an offense, but Nick stepped in, you know, 27 touchdowns and two interceptions, played phenomenal football, and, you know, he, we had momentum. And I think he feeds off that. I think he understands it. I think he gets it. And he's been able to sit for a year. He's been able to watch Carson uh, make a lot of plays. And sometimes you, when you learn vicariously, when you sit back and watch and you're not out in the field, Shannon, you know being hurt or not, just not playing in general. Next time you get back out there, you appreciate and you sever every moment and you try to make the most of it. When I look at Nick Foles, you, you look at it like this. <clears throat> Case Keenum in Minnesota. Everybody thought, the oh, they thought, oh, Sam Bradford's done, they're done. But Mike Zimmer put Case Keenum into the lineup. They ran the football. Look. And what happened yesterday, they turned the ball, Skip, they turned the ball over, what, three, four times? And still almost had a chance to win the game. It took an outstanding play from Cam Newton. Oh, you mean the Minnesota, 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 against, Minnesota against against he, Carolina. He turned, Case turned Case. over three times. Yeah. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If you don't turn it over, you have an excellent mm -hmm. chance of winning this yeah. ball game. And I think that's what Nick Foles need to do. They can run the football. You think about yesterday how they ran the football, Skip. They were almost like six yards a carry for over 20, 26 carries. That tells you they can run the football. When you can run the football, now I can play action you. I'm going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. Guys will be wide open. Mm -hmm. They don't need to ask him to do a whole lot. He's heard this verbiage in Kansas City. Doug Peterson got the job. He brought Nick Foles with him to Philly. He knows this offense. He understands this offense. They got talent around him. They do. Alshon and Torrey and Clement and Ertz will be back. Burton, the running backs, Lajahi. What, uh, I don't think Blunt played yesterday, but we know what he can do. And defensively, Skip, mm. they still can go hunt your quarterback. Mm -hmm. They will hit your that's quarterback. Where be, that's where they can beat you. And that's the thing. Carolina, offensive line, a little suspect. Minnesota, okay. Can you protect? Can you hold up? Because they're going to hit your quarterback. Jim Schwartz is going to put him in that wide nine, that cowboy front, and he's going to say, go get the quarterback. Mm. So all through 2013, I kept saying, He's going to fall apart. He's going to fall apart. And I figured you were one play away from being back in the lineup, and it just didn't, didn't happen. happen. He just kept making play after play. He's not the most athletic guy, though he has some mobile. Some. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he came in yesterday, and the yeah. first play, he, he takes nah, it right up can, the middle for nine yards. He can move now. He can move a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, he can, I, I mean, he's not enough. immobile. Yeah. For a guy his size, enough. I mean, you don't think about a guy yeah, being 6'6". Six, six, six. Six, six. Is, is he legit 6'6"? Six, six? He's what a they legit 6'6". Six, six. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I want you to describe 
who this guy is that you would see in the meetings or in practice? What's he, what makes him tick? Who is he? I think he's a calm demeanor guy, mm -hmm. but I think he's really smart. I think when he's in tune with the game plan, he understands it. Then if the defense gives him what, what he's looking for, he'll take advantage of it. He's not a guy who's going to make errant throws or, or mm -hmm. get erratic. And I think he has enough leaders around him in Jay Ajayi and Alshon Jeffries to mm -hmm. continue to push hard when things may a, get tough. He's not an emotional guy. Yeah, he's not an emotional guy. guy. So he can be the guy that can still lead the team, can still lead by example and through his play and, and, and still position this team so they have an uh, opportunity to win the game at the end. Did you get along with him even though you were competing? Oh, uh, yeah, he was a great guy. He really? was a great guy. And he, he helped me. I helped him. Uh, even coming in as a rookie, he was able to, you know, shed light on things that, you know, in the quarterback room you look for. Some things that I didn't notice, some things that uh, Matt Barkley didn't notice at mm -hmm. the time. And I just thought it was a good quarterback room. I know they have a great quarterback room now and talking to some people. Uh, so, you know, I reach out to Nick. I, I want the best for him. You know, I think the, Steel and the Eagles nation really has yep. to get behind him and support him. How big is his arm? How would you rank it? It's like scale of one to ten. He can throw tens. it a mile. Yeah, yeah, he can throw it. I mean, he can throw it a long ways. Uh, I don't, he's a little older now. I don't know if he's as strong as Wentz arm, but he can make all the throws. It, I, like I said, I don't think it, this is a situation where Doug Peterson scales back the offense. Mm. I think they continue to do the same things that they've been doing all year long. Don't change because the guys will see that, and then you know you don't want them to go into a shell and start feeling like they got to play, you know, complacent or, or conservative. Hey, the throw he made yesterday, you want to talk about clutch? That game is that was still a clutch throw down. Hey, third That's and you. eight. That yeah, I mean, coming off the bench, and, and that could be coming a momentum bench, builder. That, That's a momentum builder as well. But you think about this, Skip. They ran the ball 32 times yesterday. The Eagles did 32 for a buck, 39 for yep. a 4.3 average. They still had 41 pass attempts. So that just goes to show you when you can run the ball, now I can play action you. I'm going to have guys right. wide open. Because you got – what are you going to do? You got to – if your front seven can't stop the run and you can't play yep. coverage on the back end, Nick Foles is going to have a field day. I believe he, he's smart enough. He's been in this game long enough yes. that he understands the thing that – the good – what makes Tom Brady. Tom Brady can already – he can get off script. But – He's getting a good play into a great play. Mm -hmm. He's getting a bad play. Tom Brady will never allow you to get him, put him in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. And that's what Nick Foles has to do. When you come in, you have to make sure you never get into a bad play. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a bad play, you're like, mm, I don't like this. Let's get out of this. Let's go to something good. Mm -hmm. Because all you have to do is just stay on. Get me back second and 10. Don't get me back second and 13. Course. Don't let me, don't let them get the ball out if we miss an assignment. Mm -hmm. You should have slid left, but we we went right and the guy hits us in the back. Stay on rhythm, stay mm -hmm. on course. I like what this team has. I like but, the makeup. But, but I think when Nick Foles lay down at night for the rest of this week and throughout the rest of this season, he has to visualize the opportunity to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, yeah. th this is a chance of a lifetime. You take over a team with good offensive weapons, a mm -hmm. good defense. It is. And all you got to do is come in and do your mm. job. Hand it off. Make the plays. Don't hurt the game. Mm. You have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Be like, yeah. That's an unbelievable bums, opportunity right now. He's like, this is, I got some bums. That's an unbelievable up opportunity. I got some more bums. I wish but it was me. I'm looking at all these bums. <laughs> but the biggest bums I got coming into my building, the last game of the season, mm -hmm. I can make sure. Mm. Cowboys. Oh, geez. I can make sure they going home. Get going get, home. Do, do you remember what him, the skip. Cowboys did at Philly in 2013 in his magical run? Remember when they went in there and won 17 to three, and Nick Foles scored three points? Remember that? I was just throwing that. That's, out. Yeah, that was. That's, that was then. Yeah, no, is this now. Is now. <laughs> okay. Hey, Fletcher Cox. Did you see all those hits they got? Boy, it's vicious. Mm. That, they coming. Did you do you remember what happened Sunday night? You did you see that game that 37-9? Wait, who didn't play in that game? Well, he'll get a chance. Huh. He'll get a chance. Sean Lee did he'll not get a play. Chance. Oh, Jay Jahi. Sean Lee's a difference maker. Yeah. Now, I will say he that. Is. Thank you. Yeah. He's a difference maker. Done deal right here. What they got, what they Man, got they, to do? It should, be, it should be in them notes somewhere. What, what yeah. they got to do with them nine points they scored? Yeah. He play offense? Mm. Oh, yeah, he the well. reason, so that's the reason old, old, old Wins got hurt, huh? Or Sean yeah. Lee was playing. Well, mm. you got you to gotta find ways to get the ball back into the hands of the offense. So okay. Sean Lee is a guy who can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out. Yeah. But we already, we division champs. I need my T-shirt. Fly, Eagles, fly. We. Flock. <laughs> we flock it, Skip. Yeah. You, you did pick him to win the division before the year started. I remember. I know who you picked. Yeah. 
I know who I didn't pick to make, make the playoffs. Can you tell the people at home who I didn't pick? Did you predict that Sean Lee was going to miss I didn't predict. Games? I didn't predict Carson Wentz uh. was going to get his knee hurt either. Uh. Oh, since yeah. we're not predicting things. The realities of the NFL. Realities <laughs> of the NFL. No mercy. The Cowboys played a nail-biter with the Giants for three quarters yesterday, then scored 20 unanswered in the fourth quarter for a 30-10 to 10 win. Dak Prescott threw for over 300 yards for the first time this season, and the Cowboys have now won two straight to get to 7-6 and six overall. After the game, Dak credited his teammates for the win. He's talking about your ability to stay with it and, and the big play he's finally hit after a, a long, prolonged period of not being able to get much going. Uh, yeah, I mean, they were, they were great. Those big plays needed them. I mean, obviously, they were, they were great when they hit. They were fun to watch, uh, to watch those guys run and do what they do best. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was a grind. It was a grind early. Uh, it was a grind all throughout the game, and we were finally able to get some momentum, uh, get going, and uh, it got good right there in the fourth. Dak's stealing your bow tie look. Yeah, he's mm. trying to be mm. biting, be bite, biting on me. Mm. <laughs> How impressive was Dallas? Not impressive at all. They did exactly what I said they were going to do. I said this is a, rival, a rivalry game. The game will be close. And what happened, Joy? It was close. It was 10-3, mm -hmm. then 10-10. And at the moment the Cowboys got the lead, 17-10, within five minutes, it was 30-10. to it was 30 mm -hmm. to 10. Mm -hmm. So the Cowboys' offense looked good against a very underachieving defense mm -hmm. who has not looked like themselves all year long. The Giants' offense, Skip, I'm sorry. And uh, that Eli streak was snapped. But Eli looked terrible. I can't, I don't really know how what else to say. Now, he gonna, somebody else is going to believe that they can fix Eli. But you see, you see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And if they, wanna, if they want to look at the younger guy, why does Davis Webb continuous, continuously skip? Why is he on the inactive list? How are you looking at him? I don't know. You can't. I don't really care, but. No, they, they skip. They sold us a bill of goods mm. that they wanted to look at the younger guys. Yep. And the guys they can be looking at, he's mm. not available come game time. Skip, the Cowboys, I mean, look, come on, Skip. Look at the Giants. Look mm. at them. The team you picked. Yeah, I picked them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and if, Skip, okay, I picked them. Did you pick the head coach and the general manager to get fired? Mm -hmm. Did you pick that? No. Nope, okay, I did then. Not. So what do you think they were going to be playing for? You tell me the team that loses their coach and general manager in the same week and all of a sudden they come out there inspired. Especially. I have seen it happen a lot. I ain't never seen it. And everybody talked about it last week on the Dallas side going into this game because this is the scary game where they have returned the beloved Eli to the starting lineup. They have gotten rid of the coach nobody liked. Along with him, the, the general manager had been so inept in picking over the okay, last before five they took years. E before they yeah. took Eli out of the starting mm -hmm. lineup, how was the offense looking? Well, when you put him back in and he's won two Super Bowls and he's so beloved and he gets a standing ovation by the entire stadium mm -hmm. when he trots out for the first series, you could have a problem with your arch division rival. Applause don't and win. they did. Applause don't win games. Talented players win games. And right now, the Giants are lacking that on the offensive side of the football. Mm. The quarterback is – we can, and, and skip. That's not to take anything away. Eli will always be a two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback mm -hmm. with two MVPs. But Eli Manning this year mm. has not been close to that. They haven't scored 30 points in a game since the last game of the mm. season in 2015. Mm -hmm. They've only been to 24 once, and they lost that game mm. to the Eagles. Mm. He has one 300-yard game passing this year. That's against the Eagles. They were down 14 0 in, uh, entering in the fourth quarter. Mm. They took the lead 21 14. Eagles storm back, end up winning the game, I think 24 21 or 27 mm -hmm. 24, something of that nature. But Skip, let's be real. Now, I know you, Dak, you see Dak was throwing the ball. I just want to know one thing defensive backs, Dez Bryant run two routes. Mm. He runs something in breaking or he runs a back shoulder fade. Mm. You let him run a slant and go set and you let him go 60 yards. I don't get it. Now, Skip is about to tell you guys how good the Cowboys and they're going to be a dangerous team if they make the playoffs. All that is futile because mm. he and I both know mm. they will not be going to the playoffs. In Joy, the have I spoken yet? No, I'm no. talking to Joy. Oh. I hadn't talked to Joy all week. Joy was oh. gone. Oh. I've been talking. I hadn't talked to Joy in a while. Mm. Joy, it's futile. And so, guess what? <laughs> guess what? My turn. Yeah, it's your turn. I have been telling you very consistently all year long that the Dallas Cowboys go as Sean Lee goes, and you have ridiculed that time and time again. You've tried to make lame jokes about it and other topics, <laughs> and right before your very eyes, it happened again yesterday. 
Sean Lee came back. And what happened? They won again. So, wow, I'll, I'll just throw the records out here. You said it was all about Zeke. No Zeke, no chance, right? Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, wait a minute, Zeke played against the Rams. Zeke played against the Packers. Mm -hmm. Both of those games were at Jerry World. And what happened, Mr. Sharp? They lost mm -hmm. because they did not have Sean Lee in the second half. So let's see. Last year they were 13 and 3 with Sean Lee. This year they're 6 and 1 with Sean Lee, but they're 1 and 5 without Sean Lee. Explain that I 30 think, points. I think it just screams what, what? at you that they go as Sean Lee goes because, as Rob Ryan told you sitting right here, he is a freak. He is the most valuable player to any defense in the National Football League, is Sean Lee. This team goes as he goes, and when he's out, they're gone. Oh. Oh, the phone rang busy. Gone. I was trying yeah. to call Bobby Wagner and Luke Keekley, but yeah. the phone was busy. Well, but go ahead. I'll let yeah. Sean Lee have that well, title. Well, you should because this guy, all he had yesterday was 18 tackles and an interception. That is mind-blowing to me. Tell me about the offense. Tell me about, tell me about I, uh, I'm, that. I'm going to tell you about the defense because going into the Redskins game, going back 10 days ago Thursday night, they had given up in the second half without Sean Lee 114 points to scoring 22. They had lost second halves 114 to 22. So he comes back yesterday, and what did they do in the second half? They won 20 to nothing because they had Sean Lee and the Giants don't have Sean Lee. And whoever they play, as long as Sean Lee is healthy, and I don't know how long it's going to hold because when you got a hamstring and he missed the first series of the second half, and I was like, oh, my God, this is it. He's pulled it again. They said he was jogging on the sideline, but they had just built in some early rest. And I don't get it. I don't know why you would rest somebody for the first series of a second half after you just got your, how long is halftime? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. So if you can explain that to me, but, but it, it was horrifying to me because offensively they are challenged because not one of the receivers can separate, starting with Des Bryant. And I nearly, I didn't throw up the X, I nearly just threw up early in the game because he dropped the first ball thrown to him, and then the second one is right up the rail and hits him right in the face mask, and it could have made it a 10 to nothing game at that point. And it went right through throwing up the X hands and hits him right in the face mask and bounces off. <laughs> That's how his confidence has been shattered. And that game turned on one play late in the first half with a minute and a half left in which the Giants, because they have so little respect for Des Bryant, left somebody named Brandon Dixon, a cornerback, who is now on his seventh team in three years, who spent the whole year on the Giants practice squad, who just got activated in late November. They left him in single coverage on 88, on Des Bryant, who makes $9 billion or whatever it is. You know, like, he, he's, he, he is the most overpaid wide receiver in football. And what happens? Brandon Dixon gambles, and he loses. And all of a sudden, I look up, and there's nobody home. And Des Bryant is off to the races, and I wasn't even sure he was going to be able to run this one in. But he did. And that made it 10-all, and it hung at 10-all all the way into the fourth quarter. And Eli's got the ball back, and, and it's still 10 to 10. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, here they go again. And just it was set up for Eli to have a big coming home party. <laughs> and guess what? They try and end around to a guy who shares a name with your older brother named Sterling Shepard. And guess who blew it up? This is the play of the game, if we could see this. End around, guess who? Guess who beat the blocker and throws down Sterling Shepard? This is the play, the turning point of the game. Sean Lee, number 50. He was everywhere I looked up, 50s in the middle of it. Pass plays, run plays, reverses, he's in the middle of it. He changed the game. They were forced to punt, and then the, 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 the sky avalanche. fell. Then Just, the avalanche occurred. Skip, if you don't mind, when we saw this run back and forth. Mm -hmm. Dez Bryant, in breaking route, slant. That's all he's got. What do I tell the DBs? If you open the door, flies come in your house. Yeah. What do you do? If you go, either you press him would, when you're up in that situation, or you just play off. You can't be in between, Skip. He's up in a press position. Mm -hmm. He bails. Now Daz beats him to the point. He's already in an uh, uh, unattainable, unattainable situation mm -hmm. because now he's got to gamble. He knows, Skip, he has nobody. He's got to get him down. He goes for around the waist. Mm -hmm. Daz shrugs him off, and it's off to the races. And as you mentioned, when they were in conventional sets, when they play in base defense, they had help over the top, the Cowboys had trouble moving the ball. It was when they gambled, yeah. tried to get home and leave them one-on-one. -on -one. 
But Skip, you dad's got two routes. He's in or his back shoulder. Think about what they threw to him up the rail he dropped. Fade route, that's what he got. That's all he's got. And I just, agree. I agree. We, that's all I've got. We watch him and again. So I've been campaigning for Bryce <laughs> Butler, and then he shows up inactive yesterday because he's got some foot that's been plaguing him for oh the last goodness. month. So that's another blow for this team. But all it has to do now is go up to Oakland next Sunday night. Oakland didn't look all that good at Kansas City. I told you. Yeah, yeah. What you mean all that okay. good? Oak, well, Oakland's well, done. Well, okay, good. Well, I hope they're done next Sunday night because if my Cowboys manage to go up there and figure out how to win that game because Dak Prescott's back playing at a very high level. By the way, he had an 87 QBR yesterday, which tied Phillip Rivers for the best among starters in the whole league mm -hmm. this past week. So I'll take that. But if they go up there and beat Oakland, guess who's coming back? 21's coming back. So here we go. Is it a long shot? Yeah, it is. Where are you going? Shot. You go home. This would be the most dangerous NFC team in I, the playoffs. I told Derek, who's security guard, he's going on an extended vacation. I told mm. him if he wait just two weeks, the Cowboys can join him. Because mm. it's over for them. Mm. They own the tiebreakers over no one. Over no one. Mm. So I look at what's left in the NFC, and obviously we just talked about I, I give you this. Nick Foles is still going to be he, – he's going to be formidable with that team because mm. it's a really good football team. But I look at the Vikings and the Rams and the Saints and Carolina and the Falcons and the Seahawks. I don't love any of them. I can't make a strong case for any of them. But if Dallas manages to creep in the back door and get that last spot, Skip. you better look out. All the teams you lane. They have the tiebreakers over them, and you only play one of them, and that's and that's Seattle. Seattle. Mm -hmm. But even if you beat Seattle, Carolina, New Orleans, Falcons still have the advantage over you. Stranger what you things go. have happened. Oh, you every year it. we say that. Uh, you know what? Oh, I'm, it's I, impossible. I, I love Sha Sean Lee. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the, the the impact Sean Lee had on the offense that had 454 total yards and was 50 percent on third down, seven to 14? Can you tell me the impact that Sean Lee had on the offense? Yeah, he lifts everybody because you see he's there. 50's there. He's the leader of the whole football team. He is. Damn, Sean yeah. Lee, is Sean yeah. Lee a middle linebacker I or is he God? He, he's their God. No, stop it. Yeah. He is. You, you know. heard it. You, you, I don't hear nothing. Keep making jokes. All the, I know the, is. The numbers scream, Sean Lee, great. No, Sean Lee, not so much. I mean, when you throw 20 or 30 and you throw for 300 feet. God yeah, said, okay. God keep on talking. That's blasphemous. Yeah. You talk, oh, he is God. Yeah, okay, you okay, keep on. No, he I, I ain't that said was no a more. signal mm -mm. to you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I ain't said no more. But, Skip, Dak Prescott mm -hmm. was 20 or 30, 330 yards, three touchdowns, oh, no um, pick. No I, big deal. I, I saw Carson Wentz go on the road. Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz beat the team that beat the brakes off you in your building. Hmm. You remember that? Did Dak win at New York last year? No, but he won this year. <laughs> guess what the game breaker was <laughs> to that guy who can't run, that <laughs> Jason Witten guy? Did you see that yeah. throw to Jason Witten? Giants, was that not a sweet route? The Giants route? are doing so well, they fired their head coach hmm. and general manager yeah. with a month left in the season. That's when a team is most dangerous. And I saw the, new, I saw hmm. the Rams go to Dallas with Zeke hmm. and with Dak. And beat the brakes off him. And I saw because my guy. there was no Sean Lee. Walk it to him. Yeah. Walk it to him. What was the score at halftime of the Dallas and Rams game at Jerry World? What was the score? 24 to 16. So my team put up 24 just as walk it to him put up 24. No, 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 the no, 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 you see, we're walking to it. My team ended up with 43 and a win. Mm -hmm. Your team ended up with 30 and an L. Yeah, my team didn't have a Sean Lee. defense. So. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that, Jerry. No mercy. The Jaguars beat the Seahawks yesterday, but it's the end of the game that everyone's talking about. With Jacksonville running out the clock, Michael Bennett dove at the knee of the Jags center, igniting a fight between the two teams. Sheldon Richardson threw a punch and was ejected for Seattle on the next play. Quentin Jefferson of the Seahawks received an unnecessary roughness penalty and was ejected on his way to the locker room. Fans threw beer on him. Jefferson then confronted the fans and started to climb into the stands. One Seahawks player tweeted that racial slurs were used against Jefferson. Bennett and Jefferson talked about the incident after the game. I'm the man, just like the other man in the stands. I'm not going to let somebody disrespect me, throw a beer on me. Like, just because I'm playing football, I'm still a human being. I'm still a man. And I said, I'm out there playing, playing a game. And at the end of the day, it's a game, and I'm a man. I'm not going to let somebody disrespect me like that. 
going into the stands, do you think that was that was the right call? Was you still I don't know. That? Was it the right call for him to throw? No, beer it wasn't. On it, it absolutely wasn't. I'm just wondering. If I'm that just wondering if it was the right call for him to throw a beer on me. Yeah, human beer. How would you like if one of your kids are playing sports or somebody threw beer on him? Exactly. So don't don't come in here with that. Then. He heated. What else do you want to ask the man? You got beer thrown on him. Oh, no, 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 no cameras on me. That's just the truth. He's a human being. They trying yeah, to. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. You're good. Right. You good, Q? I care about you because you you a person. That's what I care about. I don't care about you being a football player. I care about how you feel as a person. He just kind of lost it. Somebody poured a beer on his head walking out of the stadium. You know. So I told him that's pro football. They they pay to get in. They can do whatever they want. I guess. Shannon, what's your reaction to the fight on the field and Jefferson? Before I get to the reaction, I want to take Pete Carroll. That's bull jive. At no point in time, I've gone and I went to a lot of games, and I got tickets from the World Series that Joe and I went to this past. At no point in time, do I, when I'm reading in the back of the ticket, it says fans can do whatever they want. It doesn't say fans can throw beer, they can throw ice, they can yell obscenities, they can yell profanities. There's nowhere on that back of that ticket that says that fans can do whatever they want. Mm. Pete Carroll, all you're doing is feeding this narrative that because they paid 50 or 200 bucks or however much they pay for the tickets, they can do whatever they want. No. The question that I have, if that who, whomever threw the beer or threw the ice, if they were walking down the, st the street and they had a cup of beer or a cup of ice and they saw this young man walking by, would they throw it on him? You see, what happens, Skip, when you're in the stands, it's almost like, it's an enclosure, like you're at the zoo, and you're poking at the animals. They tell you don't throw things at the animals. Yep. You're there to be entertained. Your entertainment does not mean throwing ice and beer on me. Does not mean you yelling obscenities and profanities at me. Back to Michael. Skip, I really wish he would stop doing what he's doing in the victory formation. He's going to get somebody's hurt. Diving at people, and he's like, I get it. If you, if you want to play hard, if you want to rush, rush like you normally would. Because at no point in time does Michael Bennett does this unless it's a goal line situation or a fourth down situation. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go hit the guy in the mouth, do that. But diving at the guy's knees, that's uncalled for. Because what it does is that it sets your teammates up to get some of this blowback. Yep. Although they might not get you, they might end up injuring somebody else, one of your teammates. I really think it's unnecessary. You had ample time to have an impact on the outcome of this ball game. It didn't go in your favor this time. They're going down in the victory formation. Let it go. I understand the frustration is very high. Skip, maybe Michael Bennett is starting to come to the realization that this thing is not going to be like it once was. Mm -hmm. Richard Sherman is going to be coming off an Achilles injury. He's getting up there in age. A lot of these guys, Cam Chancellor had the neck injury. We don't know if he's going to be able to come back. And if he does, how effective will he be? I get it. The frustration is high. You're losing and you thought you were going to be better at this point than what you actually are. But I think this is uncalled for. Um, Sheldon Richardson probably going to get suspended again. Yep. Throw, throwing a punch. The NFL is going to clean this kind of stuff up. Uh, Quentin Jefferson, although I understand your frustration, young man, it's hard. Um, Jacksonville, fans of Jacksonville, I'm talking to the ones that would do something like this. This is the first time in a very long time you've had something positive to cheer about mm -hmm. when it comes to your ball club. And you've already won the game. Normally, you throw stuff at teams that the players that win because you're upset they beat your ball club. Skip, you've already, you've already won. You won the game. Yep. So that's not enough for you to win the game. Now you want to try to humiliate and denigrate someone by throwing something on them. Why? Skip, why would they do that? I don't get it. Does that make you feel good? And I, I tell people all the time, alcohol changes your behavior. It doesn't change your morals because you won't do anything drunk you didn't at least think about sober. That's how it works. But you don't go to the game to pour drinks or to throw ice or to hurl, to hurl slurs and obscenities at a player. That's not what you, you go to get entertained. And if the entertainment um, is about you throwing things at a player or yelling obscenities, stay home. Now, whomever did this, they need to be found out and they should never, ever be allowed to come to a Jacksonville Jaguars game again. That's, the, should you, that's what their punishment should be. Fans, you, you're taking these things too far because at the end of the day, mm. they're exceptionally talented, but they're still human beings. Ask yourself, and that's what I always say, would you say that when you hide behind the key, keyboard courage is what I call it, Twitter muscles. Everybody got them, woo, they got big old muscles on Twitter, Skip. 
If you saw one of these men walking down the street, would you call them an in? Would you curse them? Would you throw things on them? I think not. Don't think because you get to buy a ticket and you're protected by a barrier, you get to say and do whatever you want to do. Mm. Enjoy the game. If your team, boo them. Scream, be upset. But sometimes fans take it too far. There's no question whomever threw the ice, whomever threw the beer, Mm. and if they yelled obscenities, they went far too far. I think the NFL is going to look at this. I believe uh, Sheldon Richardson will get suspended the game, Skip, because he threw a punch. And remember, they said they're going to look, they're going to start cracking down on these non football mm-hmm. plays. Throwing a punch is not a football play. So he should be expected to be suspended for one, maybe even two games. Mm. So you covered a lot of ground. This has lots of layers. I'm going to do big picture Seattle Seahawks. I've always thought this about the Seahawks. They have winning character. They don't have much losing character because when they lose, they mostly just want to fight. Yep. Right? So. Let's go to victory formation. The, the classy way to play this is to go half speed at it. You, you just. You take one step, you, you that's just, what you do. You accept your fate. They have won the game. I know it's been chippy from start to finish. Jacksonville plays chippy, man. Yeah. Jalen Ramsey plays. There, there's a lot of talk going on. You know what happens, Skip? Yeah. Well, Seattle sees Jacksonville in themselves. They do. They're coming. In, they're they're becoming the new. That's Seattle. the way they play I, I would defense. Agree. Yeah. No, I'm with they you. They run the ball and the that quarterback gets out of harm's way. That is correct. But by the letter of the law, or maybe you could say the law of the NFL jungle, you you can play to the final gun. You, yeah. You can right. go if you, if you want to blow it up. You can yeah. blow up the kneel down formation. Uh, I just I'm with you. I just don't like going for the center's knees when he's basically a defenseless player. Correct. Because he can't even really see you or no. hold you off. Right. Right? Right. And so Brandon Linder is the, the center, and, and he's in there pushing and shoving because he's got a living to make, and he thought that got threatened. And a right. lot of the Jacksonville uh, players said in the locker room, it's just dirty play. Right. You're trying to cost us our, our careers here. And they changed the rule. Offensive linemen, Skip, they don't let offensive linemen cut in the interior they line like they, like they once they did. They don't. And I've said this many, many times on television about Sheldon Richardson. He's got huge talent, but off the field, as you know, he's had character issues. Yes. So it doesn't surprise me that he lost it and went over the edge and threw a punch, and I'm with you. He's the one who's going to get suspended. Now to Quentin Jefferson. I hear you. You're right about the price of that ticket doesn't give you the right to, to yell or throw or whatever you want to do. But conversely... I don't know what Quentin Jefferson can prove. Let's say he, hypothetically, he goes in the stands and he finds the guy who threw the whatever. The ice or whatever it was, yeah. correct. And there are a whole bunch of people screaming at him. Mm-hmm. But let's say he sees who threw whatever, and he goes up and gets a hold of him, and he beats him to a pulp. <laughs> okay, help me out. What does that prove? Where is that going? Well, he's probably going to go to jail. He's going to jail. He's going to be suspended for a very, very long time. And he's going to get sued for millions yes. of dollars, yes. right? Yes, So it's it's like futile there. I don't know what you can do. I, I'm with you, Just and, and I get what Michael's saying. He's a man, and he deserves to, to defend himself as a man. I got it. But it's a losing battle. I don't know where you go with it. You you really have to let security. And I saw two or three security yeah. guys leaping up onto yes. the next level to go after him. Right. So at least they were on the scene, man. They were on the case. And this is what I don't get, Skip. If a, an actor or an actress, they're in a movie and the movie is terrible. Do you see the actor, the actor, or actress walking down the street? You don't pour anything on them. You wouldn't do that. But you're there to be entertained. But you feel you can. You feel you can do that to them. Ah, oh, what are you gonna do? I, I'm not. The, I'm there to entertain you. My, your, my entertainment benefit to you does not give you permission to throw things at or on me. Doesn't give you permission to yell racial epithets or to re- slurs at me. That's not. My job is to go out there and try to tackle, sack the quarterback, mm-hmm. score touchdowns. That's the inter- entertainment value that I provide. Right. But then you skip, skip. These fans, they go too far, man. Oh, he's just a fan. Just. But, woo. And by the way, just a quick aside, I'm not saying that the N word wasn't yelled because it, it's very yeah. possible it was. But two of the Jacksonville fans in Jacksonville jerseys in the front row yelling the loudest were two black guys. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not, it was a mixed yeah. uh, crowd. I, I, skip, I don't have no problem. I don't have no problem. I don't have a problem with the yelling. For me, 
mainly people got most upset at me yep. when we won. Because you know I'm talking, I'm right. rubbing it in. You're right. Skip, if you beat me, what's there to talk about? I'm just, I'm got my just head because down. Because it was a fight. And, yeah. And, and this is all new to them. Like it's been a long time, man. Yeah, I would say, act yeah. like you've been there before, but, yeah. but you haven't been there. They have, before. but it's been a while. Well, so well, they kind of forget. Years, that, yeah. Well, the, 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 last, the last time was. At Denver in a playoff game with Mark Brunel, right? Was, well, no, I, they. I, I know, they, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I was bringing up a oh, oh, sore yeah. spot for you. Yeah, right? we, our fans should have jumped on them. They should have jumped them. Yeah, right. Keenan McCardell yeah. and Jimmy Smith and, yeah. and Brunel, wow. Natron Means. I wouldn't have even felt bad. I'd have helped them. What year was that? 90. I don't want to talk yeah, about okay. it. <laughs> it was after the 96 season. 96. That was the worst loss of my life. It was. It was the worst loss of your life. Except for the losses you suffer on the show. But no, I beat you down, Skip. I feel, I feel very good. I mean, I beat it. Sometimes I come in, I'm like, oh. Uh, and then when I leave, I'm like, yeah, I feel good. I re reinvigorated, mm. rejuvenated. I don't think Joy's buying that. That's what my counselor said. Mm. She said, I need you to go to work tomorrow and bust. That's what she told me. Go to work tomorrow You're what? and my counselor. You're going to counseling because of this show? She said, go bust <laughs> him up again. Because I told her I needed uh, some medication. I uh, said, I need something to, to pick uh, me up. Uh, she said, beat Skip down okay. five days a week mm -hmm. and call me on Monday. Just try some uh, Diet Mountain Dew. I right? ain't drank, mm -hmm. drinking that mess. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm about to get a bunch of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have had a bunch of it if, if Carson hadn't went down because mm -hmm. you know he's going to win the MVP, Skip. You know he was. I I'm afraid Tom Brady just surged ahead. <laughs> you think? No mercy. Don't look now, but Lonzo Ball and the Lakers have won two straight. Lonzo had one of his best games in Philly last week with a near triple-double, but in Saturday's win, he only scored five points and sat out the fourth quarter. Despite that, Magic Johnson continues to praise Lonzo. He's special, and so I think that uh, he knows how to play the game. His basketball IQ is off the charts. We've seen a couple games where, he ha where he's had triple-doubles. Um, we have to remember something. The kid was 19 when he signed, 20 now. Um, no guy was who they were in the beginning four years later, three years later, five years later, okay? So, you know, his numbers are the same as Jason Kidd. You look at Steph Curry, his numbers are about the same as Steph Curry. We're going to be patient with this young man. We're not going to push him. Uh, we're not going to change his shot. I love his attitude. The players love him. He's a hard worker. People don't see that he comes here late at night, gets up a lot of shots. So uh, we know what we have in Lonzo, and I think it's only going to get better for him this season as well as years to come. We had our conversations, and we're going to have a film session together. I was waiting for about 25 to 30 games after that. Then we're going to sit down point guard to point guard and just hang out, watch film, and ask him what does he see, and then I'll tell him what I see. Shannon, what did you make of Magic's comments? Well, Magic keeps using the word special, and Magic believes that he is special, and I believe Magic knows the point guard position as well as anybody that's ever played the game, considering I believe he's the greatest point guard to have ever played that position. It's fine. I find it odd that he, the names that he mentioned, Jason Kidd, that's what I said. Somebody across from me keeps saying Magic Johnson. I did not say Magic. I haven't said that one time. Not even close. You say he's transcendent. Well, I didn't say Magic Johnson. Okay, That's well, the greatest ever. Okay, well, transcendent yeah. means he's going to have to be. Well, he's going to be. Say Magic he's going to have to be well, way up. Put words in my mouth. Jason Kidd. Um, Jason Kidd. First year he averaged 11. He was basically 11, eight and six. Five, I mean five. Jason shot the ball. Jason was 38 percent. Lonzo's about 32. Um, Jason, a little better free throw percentage shooter. See, Skip, for me, let's just say I live in an exclusive building. You got 100 floors. And on the top floor is Magic. He's the great of the great. Now, this building is very exclusive. Even if I'm on the, the middle or the bottom floor, I'm still a pretty good player. I think there's a lot of room in between there. You think he's like he's going to be all-time, all-time great. I just don't see that. He's a once-a-generation passer. I don't see that. And he mentioned uh, Steph Curry. I don't know if people knew this. Steph Curry averaged 17 points a game as a rookie. I didn't know that. He, he averaged six assists and, and four and a half rebounds a game as a rookie. I didn't know that. No, everybody kept saying he's not a point guard. Right. And I kept saying before the draft, yes, he's a point guard. And, and if you look at his number, he's basically a 23-7-5 and five guy. 23 points, mm -hmm. seven assists. And five rebounds. That's what Steph Curry is for his career. Mm -hmm. But you because but because he does something better than assist the ball, which is shoot the ball from depth, 
you forget just how good he is at the point guard position mm -hmm. because he's the greatest shooter, and it's only early, I mean, it's only like, what, seven, eight years in his career. He's already the greatest shooter to ever live. Mm -hmm. So you forget that, man, Steph dishing out six, seven assists a game. But you forget that. Skip, I think Magic is saying, like, hold on, we drafted a kid at 19, he's 20. There's a lot. He's, this is the only shot he's ever known. He feels comfortable shooting this. Before we start tinkering and messing with that, he already has a lot on his plate. Let's not just mess with the shot just yet. Maybe they give him a couple of years, Skip, and see where the percentage, where his field goal percentage, his three-point percentage go from there. But it's going to be hard for me to believe, Skip, that if that, that uh, his field goal and three-point percentage doesn't go up exponentially, they don't change it. Skip, he's mm -hmm. shooting 47% from, from the free throw line. Mm -hmm. That's worse than, that's, that's Ben Wallace territory. Mm -hmm. That's Chris Dudley territory. You can't have a point, Skip, under no circumstances. Whatever he might become. Maybe he only averages 10, 11 points a game. Mm -hmm. Skip, you cannot have a point guard, a guy that handles the ball that much, mm -mm. shooting that poorly from the free throw line. And it doesn't help when every other game he's not even taking free, uh, attempting free throws. Mm -hmm. So, Magic, I'm going to, you said be patient, I'm going to be patient. I just don't see that where he is now and how how he can go. I just don't think his ceiling mm -hmm is as high as what you think it is. Okay. So, I watched the game at Charlotte on Saturday night, and then I watched the post game, and they kept promoting a Magic Johnson interview. So, I hung right in there on Spectrum Sports Net here in Los Angeles, and I watched this from start to finish. And it was compelling and convincing, as Magic Johnson always is. Mm -hmm. And, by the way, to your point about the shooting, obviously, Lonzo Ball's in a horrendous all-time <laughs> shooting slump. And the one point, we didn't have time to use all the video, but Magic did say that he encouraged Luke Walton before the year, we need a shooting coach. And he said that, Luke said, no, we don't need one. And Magic said, very pointedly, that will change next year. And he said, it's not just for Lonzo, but they're last in the league in three-point shooting as, as a, a whole, team. Right. So that has hurt them. So there will be a shooting coach, and I'm going to guess, just guess, that they will tinker or try to finesse his motion a right. little bit to more straightforward. There, I, Skip, I, in, in today's game, yep. if you don't shoot that well, proficiently, obviously. you're not winning, Skip. Okay. Now back to Magic's big picture point. He did say this kid is special, mm -hmm. and he made a very strong point and a, a great perspective point that because of his father, the pressure on this kid is all-time, all-time. We've never seen a bigger target painted on a kid's back no. because of his father, the way this kid has had to bear up under the pressure. And remember, I, I've told you, in all the years I covered the NBA, the cliche was the NBA doesn't really start until Christmas Day. Right. So I love that Magic said, we're going to have a film session, but I've decided to wait Game 30, maybe. Yeah. You know, like, let's right. just let him let him have his head. Right. Let, let him try to figure it out for 30 games. Then we're going to sit down and we're going to go over the tape. What do you see? Yeah, what this do you see? And see? this is what I see. And trust me, that will start to have an impact on this kid. Because this kid has been lost about half the time as he tries to figure it out. And by the way, just quick point of order about the Charlotte game. Mm -hmm. This is disturbing to me. Luke Walton versus Lonzo Ball. Disturbing because, trust me on this, Lonzo started out that game in an attack mode you have not seen all year. Mm -hmm. It was hell-bent to the rim. He was forcing the action in ways I haven't seen at all this year. And the numbers suggest, because he played the first nine minutes and 41 seconds of the game, and he had five points and four assists, a couple rebounds. And at the 941 mark, Luke pulled him. And he sat for the rest of the quarter, and then he sat all the way to the 450 mark of the second quarter. So that means for nine and a half minutes, Lonzo Ball sat on the bench. Mm -hmm. That's a long time, man, yeah. if you're a starter, right? Right. So when Lonzo came back in the game, he went right back into his shell. Just deferred, half-hearted passes to the wings, go to the weak side and sort of stand and watch the offense. And we were back to where – I don't know if, if he's – pouting or it's it's not that he's pouting is is he just lost with his coach the, the way the, the the you know the the way he's played you know the 
the substitution patterns are crazy on this right. team. So then he plays in the whole third quarter, and they go up a point, and they're leading by a point going to the fourth, and guess what happens? Nothing play. happens. He doesn't get off the bench in the fourth quarter. And Jordan Clarkson went crazy, had 14 in the fourth. He was He's great because he can do that. Yeah. He can be he, instant he's offense. He is he's, not, he, he's more scored than point yep. guard. And they pull away and win, you know, again, it's just Charlotte. But to win on the road, back-to-back at Philly and mm-hmm. Charlotte, it's, it's pretty good. You know, it was – Right. Okay. So, now back to Magic. I don't know if something's going on with Luke Walton because, as, as you point out, Luke Walton just wants to win games. Yeah. And if his instinct tells him, I got to go with Jordan right. here, but why would you sit Lonzo for so long – from the first quarter in which he played high speed. And listen, when he gets in attack mode going up the floor, it, again, I saw some stats, some second-level stat. He's the third fastest with the basketball. Right. Well, w- why would you take him out of his rhythm? Why would you make him sit for nine and a half minutes? See, Magic is looking at it like this. Luke, I need you to develop him because we're going to build around him. He's going to be the guy. Yeah. Luke Walton said, I ain't got time to develop him. I'm trying to put guys in there that can win right now. I'm trying to win game because if I'm developing him and we're losing, I'm not going to be around here to reap the benefits of him being what you think he can be because someone else will be coaching him. Luke, you got to realize, Skip, who Luke, most of his career, he played with who? One, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant wasn't tooling, wasn't Mm. mentoring anyone. He He wasn't. He wasn't. Kobe, nope. like, hey, look here. Can you can you put the ball in the basket, Smush? Oh, you got to go. Can you put the ball <laughs> in the basket? You got to go. That's that's how I his agree. mentality was. Yep. And Kobe's already been quoted, quoted saying that he's got to speed up the process here. Yeah. He's got to learn on the fly quicker hey, than he has. Exactly. Okay. So it's very early, and yet Lonzo Ball, soft as he is, leads the team in rebounding by 11 rebounds. That's that's not bad for right. a point guard, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that, that tells me Brooke Lopez. Okay, but, but I'm just saying he's got the ability to, to go get. He yeah. had a 16-rebound game and a 13-rebound yeah. game, and he's tied for seventh in the NBA in assists, which is not bad, and that's he's fifth among point guards. Right. you you got to get that. Not bad. No. So I'm just saying if he fixes a shot, again, he shot 41% from three at UCLA, so I think it's fixable. Could he average as he grows into his man body? Could he average a triple-double for a year? I believe he could. You believe he could shoot 40% from the three no. in the NBA? I, I, 35. If, if 35 would work, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Nobody well, I just want you to understand, he's not going to be as if – he's not going to shoot the 40, what you keep saying, UCLA. I don't believe he can shoot that, Skip. Because Steph Curry has not – I mean, looking at Steph's numbers, no. he's basically always been a 40 hovering right around – Right. Last year – or this year, he's shooting 38%. Yeah. But yeah. everything he's is 43 to 44. Virtue, you know? Sometimes you just got to be a little patient. I get my chickens by smashing the eggs, not by letting them hatch. Well, you know, if Luke Walton feels comfortable in his job, then... Nah, then, then that's Joy, you know how, how sports... Joy, this. how does sports work? It's a short menu. Yeah. It's a short menu. Dub, hot... The thing, hot, hot dub. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Chargers wideout Keenan Allen will be live in studio Tuesday morning. So join us then for Undisputed at the same time, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox. Sports, one of one.